episode of Because Space is sponsored by Archer 1999. All new episodes premiere May 29th on FXX. On the new season of Archer on FXX, the team is now the crew of the MV Seamus, traveling throughout space. Our heroes find themselves in a number of difficult situations, but the biggest question is, can Archer engage in one of his favorite activities? No, not that one. Drinking. <laughs> I'd say, yeah. Uh, it's not a question of if, but when, and how drunk I plan to get in space. wonder if that's safe. Welcome to your training video in preparation for your time in space. This session, we covered the prohibition of alcohol on all spacebound vessels. First, I want to give you an understanding of how the human body responds to alcohol on Earth and how your body's reaction may change in space. Dr. Moo? Dr. Moo? Dr. Moo! Oh, oh right. She, she can't hear me. Each person has varying degrees of tolerance to alcohol. But in general, the process begins when the ethanol in your beverage travels down to your stomach and into your bloodstream. Your liver then starts trying to break down the ethanol. If you drink more alcohol than your liver can break down, you start getting drunk. Over the course of breaking down the alcohol, you get acetaldehyde, an intermediate step. So can I drink in space or not? All right, in space, Dr. Moo can't hear you scream. Acetaldehyde is a drinker's worst enemy. It's part of the reason why you get a hangover. That and dehydration. That alcohol in your bloodstream also travels to your brain. Your brain plays into this process by releasing dopamine to make you feel good and reduce inhibitions. It also increases the effect of gamma aminobutric acid, or GABA, a neurotransmitter that dampens your ability to respond. The ethanol binds to the GABA receptor ion channel, which keeps it open and allows more chloride ions in. It's like trying to listen to the radio in the middle of nowhere. Sure, you can hear some of the music, but it can be overwhelmed by the sound of static, depending on how far out you are. This difficulty in triggering a signal results in what you see as the classic drunk, clumsy movements. Alcohol may release chemicals to make you feel good, but in turn, it can also take away the ability to perform. Do you want to get space babies? Because that's how you get space babies. We know what happens to your body when you drink. The next question is, are astronauts allowed to drink in space? Now that you understand it takes away your ability to perform, it's easy to understand that astronauts are prohibited from drinking 12 hours before a flight. NASA also has a no alcohol policy for its astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Okay, but let's say somebody did sneak a bottle or 10 of alcohol in space. Like what's the worst that could happen? Alcohol and other compounds that can evaporate or disperse in a vapor can have an impact on the station's water recovery system. And so astronauts on the space station aren't even allowed to use alcohol-containing products, such as mouthwash, perfume, or aftershave. In other words, there's nothing more valuable than making sure your ability to have clean water is intact. Can't risk it, not even for the best cocktail on earth. I'm sorry, I, I can't hear you over the sound of me drinking my martini. Now, does that mean that alcohol was never ever consumed in space? Well, no. Alcohol has been documented in space since the 1980s, starting with Mir, the space station built by the Soviet Union. Oh, hold on, wait. The Russians experimented with alcohol in space? Of course they did. That's like, wait. It's like if the, it's like if, damn it, I swear to God I had something for this. Cognac and vodka were among the Russian doctor recommended tonics for cosmonauts to stimulate their immune system, among other benefits. There are studies that conclude that moderate drinking, one to two glasses per day, may help slow the rate of bone density loss. Bone density loss is a big concern for astronauts in zero G. These studies found that moderate drinkers had a higher bone mineral density compared with heavy drinkers or people who don't consume alcohol at all. However, if astronauts were overserved to the point where they would lose cognitive or motor functions, this could pose a big threat to the safety of the experiments on board, the mechanical systems, and most importantly, to the lives of the astronauts. This is a significant reason why alcohol is not allowed in space. 
It's just not responsible. What? I'm not in space. Let's say hypothetically you're allowed to drink in space. What would the challenges be to drinking in zero G? Well, if you're talking about carbonated alcohol, such as beer, that's already a non-starter. No beer allowed. No beer? Good. It's basically water and carbs. There is no gravity in space to draw the gas and froth through to the top of the beverage to escape. So it stays distributed in a liquid and thus more gas makes it to your stomach. Drinking beer could lead to an upset stomach or a very haphazard series of rancid burps. Since microgravity doesn't allow the normally buoyant gas to form into a regular burp. Rancid burps? That sounds like everything that comes out of Cyril's mouth. This is also a limiting factor for all sodas and other carbonated beverages. I'm sure you're wondering, let's say I drink a non-carbonated alcoholic beverage. Do I get drunk quicker in space? Go on. Well, if you're thinking getting drunk in space must happen way faster because you get drunker quicker at higher altitudes, eh, you're wrong. It is actually a myth that we get drunk faster on a plane due to altitude. This can be an effect of other factors independent of alcohol consumption. Your body can feel fatigued or impaired on a plane that is not fully pressurized or at high altitudes. Those environments alone can hamper your abilities. So it's not that you're getting drunk faster, but you're feeling the compounding effects of all factors combined. Likely, people will feel the same effect of alcohol in space as they would on Earth. Although we don't have any experiments to prove it one way or the other. I mean, if you're looking for someone to test this, I am available. Now, how would you bring alcohol to space? Plastic bags. In zero G, you cannot pour liquid, so you need a way to migrate the liquid from the container to your mouth. Glass bottles or metal flasks would not be the most efficient choice, especially when gravity isn't there to help you get the liquids from the corners of the container to your mouth. The most effective and efficient way is to squeeze it from a plastic bag. Has anybody been drunk in space? Well, likely not, but that doesn't mean alcohol has never been consumed in space. A little known fact about the Apollo 11 moon landing is that our very own NASA astronaut Buzz Aldrin had a sip of wine during his moon-based activities. Now we know why they called him Buzz. <laughs> Classic. We all saw the golf ball being hit and the flag being planted, but it was not heavily advertised that Buzz also wanted to observe communion to celebrate the first human on the moon. I should probably return this. He carried the bread and wine in plastic packages and also brought a small chalice with enough room to hold a thimble full of wine. The moon has one sixth of Earth's gravity, so there was just enough to pour the liquid without fear of it floating away. When they first landed on the moon and before he exited the capsule to step on the moon for the first time, he wanted to partake in this ceremony. He took out his plastic packages, poured the wine and allowed it to settle and curl up in his cup. With the exception of this ceremonial use, there's no other documented alcohol consumption in space for any NASA mission. What? I'm not the pilot. So if you've pulled up this video to see if you can be drunk in space, the answer is kinda. But I also hope you learn that drinking in space is a terrible idea with potentially grave consequences and rancid burps. Any and all impairment will take away from the important functions that the astronauts need to perform and all the sciencing that needs to be done. Because space. Good stuff. I'm gonna go get drunk anyway. Because space. Thanks again to Archer1999 and FXX for sponsoring today's episode. This season, Sterling Archer, Lana Kane, and their crew of acid tongue misfits are on board the MV Seamus salvage ship. An important question arises as they explore deep space and try to outsmart giant aliens, intergalactic pirates, and vicious bounty hunters. How will they survive each other? Welcome to the space-tastic world of Archer 1999. New episodes of Archer 1999 premiere May 29th on FXX.